Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, this is PJ Farley and you're listening to Bods Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bods Mayhem Radio Network and staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bods Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bods Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John DeBod, a.k.a. The Bod Father, and as always, I bring you guys awesome interviews and today it's an honor to have this guy on the show. He is the bassist of Trickster, Mr. PJ Farley. Going to be talking to him about their new album that's out right now. And trust me, guys, give their music a listen. They're still kicking ass to this day. PJ, how's it going? Good, man. How are you? Awesome. Really, really great. Like I said, great to have you on here. So yeah, let's start. Let's start talking about this Human Era album that's out now, man. From you guys, uh, what's some of your favorite tracks off the album? I think. Rocket Through the Edge of the Night and Human Era, uh, Every Second Counts. But I think, for me, the, um, I like the the, the bookends to the record. First song, Rocket Through the Edge of the Night, and the last song, Human Era. It, uh, you know, Rocket Through the Edge of the Night is the oldest song for us. We, you know, we wrote it back 20-something years ago. We yeah. played it back in all-ages clubs, and we just kind of revisited it. So... It's our oldest song on the record, and then Human Era is, is the last song we wrote for the record. So, And it's all about our kind of scenario and our journey and friendship and how we grew up and everything. And it's, um, it kind of bookends the record really good. So I think those two are really the most important for me. I know this is kind of a crazy question, but how much growth have you seen Trickster go through since its formation in the eight, from 88 until the you know you guys took a break until now? Obviously, I mean, I think, you know, music speaks for itself. I mean, there's a lot more confidence and um, perspective on who we are and, you know, a little more identity. And we kind of got like our, our second, almost like a second identity with these last two records with New Audio Machine that came out back 2012, I think, and um, Down Human Era. Those two records have a pretty common denominator there. There's a, there's a common thread throughout those records, but there's growth between them as well. So... It, it, there's something very much trickster from back in the old days, and then there's this also new kind of trickster thread that's woven in. So it's kind of cool to see. So this is more or less like a second win for you guys. Mm. How hard do you guys push yourself to come up with something new from song to song that's not out of these days, or is it, or can you really? You know, we just we just write. We don't, you know, really knock our heads trying to, you know, create something no one's really ever heard before, you know, because that's, that's going to be transparent. You know, it was just, you know, you can you have, write a song with the same three chords as everyone else, but as long as it's, you know, heart and soul and you're selling it genuinely, you know, it'll come across. That's what makes a good song. What do you hope the fans take away from the new album that's out right now? Uh, hopefully they go on a little journey with us on it. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of different flavors on the record. You know, there's, uh, um, you know, this is just, you know, we get the ballad, of course. We got, you know, like a song like Every Second Counts, which is a little bit more, um, not darker, but, you know, has a different color than, say, you know, the rock into the edge of the night and crash that party. You know, so, I mean, I think there's something for everybody on there. I, you know, hopefully they just, they, hopefully they just take away from it the feeling that they have a great record to listen to whenever they want by all four original members, you know. PJ, when you listen to today's music that's out there, do you guys feel like some of the bands are really just trying to rush to get their stuff out and it don't have the mm like it used to have from back in the day? I guess so. I mean, I guess that's really, that's always existed. But, you know, nowadays it's the way the music industry works. <laughs> so I definitely hear it. You know, today's music, you say when you listen to today's music, you could be talking about anything, you know. Back when Trickster came out, when you said, when you listen to today's music, you kind of knew what you were talking about. But now with the internet and everything, I mean, today's music means whatever your preference is. Because, I mean, today's music is just, you know, quote unquote, today's music is so small. It's, you know, the hip hop or the 
EDM and, you know, country rock crossover kind of stuff. Like the true metal band, like, you know, the, the metal bands that are out there right there, right today. Right. Metal bands, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely hear, I hear, uh, there's some good ones popping up, but the majority are definitely not, not breaking the mold. They're definitely repeating themselves more than any other era of music I've ever heard. It's a lot of stuff coming out sounding the same. At least if we're just talking about what's on, you know, satellite radio and terrestrial radio, it's all very similar, and you can see that in the active rock charts and why that's suffering so so poorly. You know, it's just so it, there's nothing really that special coming out. There, there are a couple, a handful of bands that are, you know, definitely a notch above the rest, but the majority are really just kind of sounding the same. PJ, when Trickster took a hiatus, man, did you ever think that you guys ever get back to, to making a new album or anything, or what was going on at that time? I, you know, we never really thought about it. We, we Trickster kind of got put to bed, not because we wanted to break up and we hated each other or had musical differences. We just, you know, there was no to be done. <laughs> you know, there's no mm-hmm. point for us to be together anymore. We, there was nowhere nowhere for us to go, really, to make a living doing it. So we had to take a break. And, um, you know, it started coming back around well before we put put your back together. But we had been involved in so many other things at that, that point that just took us a little while longer to put it back together and really come to, you know, come to a place where we all wanted to do it. What was your thoughts on joining Trickster in 88? Because I know they had uh, another guy before uh, you came along, and, and you guys have been there ever since. So what was your thoughts on that? Uh, in 88, 87, 88, yeah. Yeah. When I first joined band, I was like, I think I was 14 years old. Wow. And, uh, you know, I was in another band. We were just playing the same clubs, my band and Trickster. And, um, you know, even back then, even before I got in the band, Trickster just had something that I, I had noticed, you know, and the crowd noticed. And, you know, we were friends just from playing the same clubs and stuff. And, um, you know, uh, it was kind of a, at first, I, w- I was kind of in a rival band. So at first I was hesitant to join Trickster. I was like, oh, well, you know, my band's better. But, you know, I saw the writing on the wall with Trickster. I mean, that, that, even though I was in a rival band, so to speak, if you asked me if I thought Trickster was going to make it, I would, I would say definitely. And so, you know, I jumped on board. What can fans expect at a show from you guys? Well, you know, we're still the same guys and definitely still have a, have a good time up there doing it. You know, we're, we are alive and kicking up there. You know, we're definitely not phoning anything in and we're not, um, you know, we're, we're not just tired and grumpy. You know, we're up there having a great time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we yeah, could man. be tired, but not grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> tired in a good way from busting y'all's ass on stage. That's a good thing. Yeah. In your own opinion, PJ, what does Trickster bring to the table for music, man? You know, I mean, Trickster is, you know, I, I can say this with all honesty that, you know, we, we, we didn't break the mold in any way, shape, or form. You know, I think we just delivered good, fun, honest music, you know, it's, and that was our contribution, you know, just to be a band that, you know, delivered music that we were passionate about and, you know, really cared about in, a, in an honest way didn't try to really be anything we weren't, you know? Right. And uh, I think that's what's kind of helped us make great records in the last couple of years, you know? We've continued that that honesty and just, you know, it's just write and make songs that make us feel good, you know? What was it for you that made you want to become a musician? What was that spark? Oh, uh, well, definitely Kiss. I mean, for me, music is always, you know, as, or, as early as I can remember, you know, I've always been, you know, whether it's the Bay City Rollers or Kiss, and then once Kiss came out and brought it to a new level and, and theatrics and you know, rock star was born, you know, but, you know, that word, you know, was always in my head, Motley Crue, all that kind of stuff. It just became more than, it was about the music that was driving it, but it became more than that, you know, it became the characters of the band and the band and the stories and the whole scene and, you know, the whole thing, which is interesting to me. You know, I wanted, I wanted the whole thing. Since it's the digital age now with social media, do you think it's helped you guys get more fans to come on along to support Trickster? I think so. I think it it, it helps definitely. You know, with with us being able to bring the music and awareness to the band, you know, it definitely helps, especially for our genre of music. You know, I mean, if it wasn't for social media, you know, I don't know who would be supporting us. <laughs> you know, social media has helped out a lot of bands. I mean, you still see Poison out there still doing this today. I mean, ACDC, look, they're back. D. Snyder, he's still doing his thing, so don't mm-hmm. ever stop, man. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, those. Yeah, I mean, those acts. You know, those. Those are you know power. You know, pretty mega acts. So I mean, they would be okay even without social media. They get some help from, from the big wigs 
you know, I think we would need a little bit more help with that. So social media definitely helps us. With all the albums out by Trickster, can you honestly pick one album that's your favorite or no? Honestly, I think this one is Human Era. Okay. <laughs> I think maybe it's just because where we are as a band and people and musicians, and you know, I just think, uh, I think we got it together. <laughs> <laughs> PJ, what's it mean to you guys when you receive an email from a fan prior to a show or before a show? They tell you guys that that your music has pulled them through a, a, a rough time. It's gave them inspiration to to overcome stuff. How does that mean to you guys? It's kind of a surreal thing because you know you're reading it, and I don't know if there's you know there's, I don't think any music fan hasn't felt that way about some band. You know, I know I have. Everyone in my band has. So for us to, when I read letters like that, you know, it's like, it could have been like something that I wrote to Kiss or, you know, a, a band that I loved growing up or, you know, so I mean, it's definitely, um, it's amazing anytime you get letters like that or any, any conversation with people who tell you that, you know, something that you were part of helped them in any way, shape or form. It's mm -hmm. powerful. When it's all said and done for Trickster, man, how do you want the fans to remember you guys and the music? I, I would think that, you know, we're a pretty cut and dry band. You know, we're we are a straight ahead rock band with a great sense of humor. And, you know, no pretentiousness. You know, we are what we are, and you know, we're a people band. And uh, you know, I just think I hope that people just remember us as as just that. You know, band that didn't take themselves too seriously, but kick ass. How can people stay in touch with you guys? Keep in touch on your tour dates by merch. How can I do that, PJ? And go to uh, TricksterRocks.com, and you know, you, from there you can spiral off to all the social media: Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And um, you know, from there we're all pretty pretty accessible. First and foremost, man, I want to say thank you guys as a fan of music. I'm glad that you, you guys, really glad that you guys came around in the '80s and started and and stuff like that. It was, I really dig your music, still do to this day. And uh, so, so thank you guys. Well, thank you for the support. Appreciate that. Before I let you go, will you care to do a promo for my show? Sure. Okay. Hey, everybody, this is PJ Farley, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour. Please go out and get Human Era by Trickster, by their other albums. Please, this band is very cool, and they're dear to me, and they've helped me out through some rough times. So go out and support them. Thanks, PJ. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it, John. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.